Okay, so Pi News episode 83, and it usually went a bit longer for Pi News, but so many good things have happened with, especially the Pi 5 recently. Uh, one of them involves a Pi 5 and this CM4 maker board, and uh, the other one, well, let's go into the news and have a look. And if you're wondering what the operating system is, this is MX Linux, and uh, it's one of my favorite Linux-based operating systems on Pi 4, works really well. Love the fact that you've got loads of different settings for Conkey and uh, ways of monitoring everything and this little clock is cool as well but I'll go through it in a separate video but let's get on with the first story which is all about RAM so you can see here Raspberry Pi 5 16 gigabyte upgrade failed hope it's not a hardware issue the green LED flashes nine times and no HDMI output bootloader upgraded to the latest one Pi Imager 301023 what to try next but if we scroll down through uh, and this is the RAM chip and currently we've only had 4 gig and 8 gig variants from the Pi Foundation. I mean to do a video on the 4 gig one to see how good it is and how well it performs. But uh, this is a 16 gig chip which didn't work but just to show that uh, changing the chip is feasible and it happened on the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, replace DRAM with a random 2 gig part. 2 gig works without the resistor so you can see here. Uh, Raspberry Pi 5 Model B with 2 gig of memory. So definitely uh, watch this space and see what happens there. Uh, in fact, let's just see if there's been any updates. That was only a day ago, so I'm sure there hasn't been. No, nothing else on that page, but definitely interesting to see. So next up was the story I mentioned in the start. So you can see here there's an M.2 drive and that maker board, which is a really cool maker board. I've got a separate video on it where I used it with the Compute Module 4. But uh, this maker, Arturo182, has fulfilled everybody's wishes by hacking together this awesome unofficial Compute Module 5. Obviously it doesn't look as neat as a Compute Module 4 sat in the board, but it's very admirable to be able to get so many of these things working. So 3D printed standoffs, so the customized PCB has all the key ports you could want from your Raspberry Pi 5, PCIe, USB-C, microSD, two HDMIs, two CSI, DSI, and a USB-A, and a GPIO connector. Someone's asked a question here as well. Is there anything passed through the CM4 connector that can't be emulated this way? There are some pins that are not available on the Pi 5 that are on the CM4, like Global EN, Boot, LED Activity, Flash, WP, EMMC, Voltage, Selection, but most of the time you can live without them. And here's a close-up of that board, and as you can see, just a meme, not serious. But it does work. Next up, great video from Jeff Geerling showing the Pinebury Pi, uh, which is an NVMe drive designed specifically for the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, you can see there's a little ribbon connector here connecting the two together. Jeff goes into great detail about the speeds and settings and various things like that, so I'll put a link in the description to the video, but definitely worth watching. And this is a really cool-looking board. But there's not just one, there's actually two. So they do a board for the bottom and also a board for the top as well. So you can choose which one is going to work better for you. Uh, I quite like the idea of the one that goes underneath. Although NVMe drives do get quite hot, so it'd be quite nice to have a separate fan on that because there's no separate heat sinks on it. Uh, the other option is to have the one that goes on the top, which was shown in Jeff's video here. So something could be done to cool that drive on the top as well. But yeah, really interesting to see. And Jeff does get some really nice speeds from it as well. Next up, on the same subject of that PCIe slot, uh, you can see here, uh, this is a different approach to it. And the connector has been taken off and the cables incredibly have been soldered on to the right bits. And you can see there's an adapter here. And this has been reverse engineered. YouTuber George Smart M1 Geo has released an interesting video this week providing more details on his process of reverse engineering the Raspberry Pi 5 PCIe connection. But I'm not sure what he actually does with it, so I'll have a quick look at the video. And I'm not going to play the video, I'll put a link in the description so you can watch it yourself. You can see all the pinouts are all detailed here. Let's see if something gets connected to that slot. Here we go, so we've got some sort of network card attached to it, it looks like. And we've got a USB breakout card here, look, uh, PCIe USB. But I'll, again, I'll let you watch the video to see all the details, but yeah, great work. And another one from YouTube, so Explaining Computers has made a Raspberry Pi 500. Loads of people keep asking about the Raspberry Pi 500. The Raspberry Pi 400 was really cool. Uh, I had a 3D printed case 
which had space for an SSD slot in it. Uh, I really love the cooling, which obviously can't be the same in this because the Pi 400 was a completely different shape board and had a lovely big aluminium heatsink on the top. Failing Computers has basically created, again, a, oh, let's not play it. So you can see a USB adapter for M.2, nice looking casing and some breakouts for USB and Ethernet and things like that. Yeah, all glued into place. Or oh, bits of bits of blue tack in here to keep it in place temporarily. It's a very nice sort of 80s style looking machine. I quite like the white keyboard on the sort of off-white background. That really does look retro. I expect we'll see many more things a bit like this on the Pi 5 until we get a Pi 500 officially. More YouTube and another operating system on Raspberry Pi 5. So I showed MX Linux at the start of the video. Uh, we've now got Kali Linux as well, so if you're into your hacking, uh, I've done several videos on Kali Linux in the past, uh, but this shows how to install it, although I don't think the download is available yet. Not sure if there's a link in here. There wasn't when I looked before. So the website is there, but yeah, I couldn't see a proper Pi 5 link or a nightly builds link. So we're going to download. Is that just going to take us to a page or is that going to start downloading? Oh, okay. So installer images, arm, we've got a link here. So at the moment, they're still talking about Pi 2, 3, 4, and 400. So there isn't a Pi 5 image, but maybe they're just working on a few things before they do an official release. But I've already been asked by a few people if that's available. So I'll definitely be trying that out when that comes. And let's not end on a Pi 5 story. Let's go right back to, I think this is a Pi 2. Yeah. Raspberry Pi 2. So old Pis are still being used. Self-snoozing alarm clock shuts itself up for you. Make mornings much easier to handle with an alarm clock that can press its own snooze button. And as you can see, it's got a really cool little arm on here. I quite like the display of it. I like that blue. And there's a YouTube video, so I'll leave a link in this story. But if you want to watch it and see how it works, I won't show it in this video, but uh, I'm going to watch it now. Okay, it is definitely a video worth watching, very professional, uh, really nice soundtrack in it, but it, the functionality looks very, very nice. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.